Good morning, my beautiful Hershey Kisses. Today is February, Tuesday, the 13th. And today we're going to be talking about pride. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 says, Pride is the first step towards destruction. Proud thoughts will lead you to defeat. In other words, pride before a crash. Have you ever been absolutely sure you were right about something? Your mind appeared to have a store of facts and details to prove you were right, but you end up being wrong? What did you do? Did you admit your error or did you keep pushing and trying to find a way to defend your position? Now, this is a situation between Joyce Myers and her husband, Dave, who I love them both. In the past, she says, when my husband and I were watching a movie or television show, we often argued over which actors and actresses were portraying the characters. It seemed to me that Dave thought Henry Fonda played half the characters in movies. Oh, look, he'd say, as we'd watch a movie on television, Henry Fonda is in this movie. That's not Henry Fonda, I'd answer back. And we'd start arguing and bickering back and forth. Both of us were so intent on being right that we would insist on staying up much later than we should just so we could see the credits roll at the end. Then one of us would say, I told you so. <laughs> Why do we want so desperately to be right about things? Why is it so difficult to be wrong? Why is it so important for us to win in a disagreement? For years, I felt bad about who I was. And in order to feel any confidence at all, I had to be right all the time. So I would argue and go to great extremes to prove I was right. I lived in frustration as I tried to convince everyone that I knew what I was talking about. It wasn't until my identity became rooted and grounded in Christ that I began to experience freedom in this area. Now I know my worth and my value do not come from appearing right to others. Trusting what Jesus says about me is more than enough. So we have to trust in Jesus Christ. Do you always have to be right? Ask yourself. Well, if you do, if you have that problem, pray and commit to trust that who God has made you to be and his love for you is more valuable than the confidence or the pride that comes from being right. Now, I like this. Uh, I appreciated this because the question that was posed here, why do we want so desperately to be right? Why is it so difficult to be wrong? I don't have a problem with that. And I don't see the point in trying to prove I'm right because I already have a healthy self-esteem. But you notice that Joyce brought out that in order to feel any confidence, she had to always be right because she felt for, she said for years, she felt bad about who she was. You see, I don't care about being wrong or right. I don't care. All I care about is being educated. All I care about is understanding. Like when I'm asking questions back and forth, it's not that I'm trying to be difficult or trying to prove that I'm right. It's me trying to make sense out of something. And if I don't understand it or if it don't make sense to me, then I'll go back and forth with you on it. Now, if you were right, what I do is I say, thank you so much because I always like learning something new each and every day, if I can. And besides, what do you win? What do you win? There's no prize. There's no money. What do you get? Nothing. So I appreciate when someone has proven me wrong and they have enlightened me to show me another way to look at it. And, and I just appreciate it so much. So this is one thing. Thank you, Jesus, that I don't suffer in this area. But trust me when I tell you, I have so many other areas that I'm working on. So there you have it, my beautiful darlings. You, you, you don't need to be validated by humans. As long as you have Jehovah and Jesus Christ validating you and everything you say is in harmony with the scriptures, you should go through life feeling amazing. 
You should feel just as good as I do. And now it's time for your power thoughts for the morning. You know, before I move on, I remember speaking with someone and I asked them, what do, what, what, so what do you get out of being right? And he said the, 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 something I've never heard in my life, something that was unbelievable. You know what he said, the reason why he likes being right? He said, because that means I'm better than you. That means I'm better than you. My mind didn't even, I couldn't even wrap my head around that. I never even thought like that. That means you're better than me. How does that make you better just because you was right about something? Anyway, that was mind boggling. Let me get you your power thoughts for today. Okay, here we go, my darling. February 13th. Thoughts, words, and habits. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith and trust and reliance on the power invested in me, be it done to you. Matthew 9, 29. How do our thoughts and the words we speak affect our habits? In my opinion, they are the starting point for breaking all bad habits and forming all good habits. In fact, thinking and speaking negatively is a bad habit in itself, and one we need to break by beginning to think and speak positively. You can literally think and talk yourself into victory or defeat. You not only get all the things you think and say, but you can have anything God says you can have in his word. Jesus told people they would have what they believed, even sight for the blind men. See Matthew 9, 27 through 30. They simply had to believe, to renew their minds, to think as God thinks. See Romans 12, 2 and Colossians 3, 10. And they could have the blessings God wanted them to have, and so can you. Power thought. I believe in God's power that gives me victory over my bad habits. So this is showing the importance of thinking positively. Because like it was brought out to us today, you can literally think and talk yourself into either victory or defeat. You not only get all the things that you think and say, but you can have anything God says you can have according to his word. So this is an excellent uh, power thought for today to focus on thinking as positively as you can. And when you have negative thoughts that come into your mind, you could always pray about it and ask Jehovah through his son, Jesus Christ, to remove such foolish thinking and to trust what Jehovah and Jesus says. And if they say that it is best for you to believe and you will receive, then that's the route that I'm going to take. And I hope you will too, my beautiful Hershey Kisses. Now we're going to go on to how well do you really know your Bible? Who said to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, let my people go. Exodus chapter five, verse one. Who led Jesus into the desert after his baptism? Matthew chapter four. Verse one, what did Jesus give the disciples before he sent them out? What did he give them? Matthew chapter 10, verse one. So let's see how well you're going to do with your Bible trivia questions for today. And I wish you well, and you already know, whatever you don't fully understand, it's always good to do your own research. Anyway, my darlings, remember how much Jehovah loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. And yes, Sheila True Love, I love you so very much. Now go out there and sparkle and shine like the light that you are. <laughs>